e benvenuti alla seconda giornata del laboratorio di pratiche sociali organizzato da, da Vessel nell'ambito di laboratori dal basso. Uh, siamo ancora oggi con uh, Emma Medina e Claudia Balocchini. Uh, Claudia ci raggiungerà nel, nel pomeriggio con una lezione sul fundraising. Invece uh, adesso abbiamo, mh, spenderemo le prossime tre ore con Emma Medina, che vi ricordo è, uh, ha un PhD in storia dell'arte ed è ricercatrice presso il Vanabe Museum ed è parte del team di, uh, del movimento Arte Utile iniziato da Tania Brughera. Uh, L'idea di oggi era quella di mh, creare una sorta di laboratorio con i partecipanti ma il diluvio universale non ci sta aiutando molto quindi abbiamo deciso di cambiare un pochino il format della, della mattinata e eh, Emma ci racconterà di alcuni, di alcuni casi studio e ci mostrerà eh, dei, dei materiali in particolare eh, si focalizzerà sul caso di, di Voken Klausur che tra l'altro è un collettivo austriaco che tra l'altro è parte del nostro programma di laboratorio di pratiche sociali saranno con noi eh, tra, tra qualche giorno e quindi insomma passo la parola a, a Emma e vi auguro soprattutto una buona visione dai vostri computer. Thank you Anna and again thank you to all the organization and RT and of course Vessel to for invite me to this uh, laboratorio del basso. Um, today as, as Anna was telling you um, we have uh, thought that could be a good idea to to think a little bit more about what we were Talking yesterday, uh, I remember that uh, we were uh, analyzing different strategies related with the arte util practices. And uh, what we thought that maybe could be more interesting is to analyze uh, concrete uh, case studies from the group of Wohan Klausur, that is one of our main examples in the archive of arte util. And uh, we really think that it's interesting to see how they have been changing their own strategies uh, following, let's say, uh, their own method of, of work uh, that uh, we consider one of the most uh, interesting in, of our, in our archive. But apart um, how they have been changing, as I told you, their uh, strategies to reach the goal and uh, uh, could um, bring these uh, beneficial social outcomes to, to the society and um, it has a lot of relation with the, um, the words that the, uh, our colleague Claudia was telling yesterday about the importance, uh, the importance of the networks and um, how it uh, is going to be a very good way to, to bring the projects in the uh, in the future and keep it going, no? And uh, so let me, and apart, I think that, uh, I almost forgot, um, I think that it's a great uh, point to talk about the Wohan Klausur because uh, as you know, and Anna, Anna just, just mentioned it, they will be uh, here at the end of this uh, laboratorio. So you could um, contrast, and I think that this could be very nice if you, can, uh, you could ask them directly about some of the strategies and the work in the steady cases that we are uh, analyzing today. So I think that this is uh, an important point of uh, beginning and uh, at the end of the laboratory you could uh, finish with this, uh, I suppose, that amazing uh, <laughs> uh, discussion with the growth and closure itself. So let me tell you, um, I think that it's important to remember uh, that um, Arte Util is a um, um, uh, social practice that uses a multidisciplinary approach to confront social and economical geopolitical situations, generating strategies in close proximity with cultural identities of a specific populations that can be connected and applied in, on a wider scale. And uh, in fact, I think that that is uh, one of the main characteristics of Wohen Klausur as a group. Because uh, let me tell you a little bit about them. Um, they started in 1993, and from since there, they have been working, um, developing different uh, projects 
uh, and all of them are uh, completely uh, in relation with the context where they are, uh, are being invited to participate and um, all the time all their project starts with the invitation of an institution that is something that's uh, very interesting too to think about it because uh, in this case uh, we can see how the institutions are generating uh, the social change or the arte util and we were talking yesterday that it's not so useful uh, to find institutions that are willing to participate in this kind of social practices but as you see that is not the uh, Unfortunately, uh, it's not a uh, general uh, norm. We can uh, uh, find a lot of exceptions and uh, really interesting ones. So in this case, we, we were telling that uh, one closure always starts with this in invitation and then they start a research about the context of every location and uh, they start to imagine which is the, uh, the urgency or the problem that they could uh, uh, think about and uh, let's say that they are really realistic so they are always um, developing a small scale uh, projects it's not that they are trying to save the world but uh, they are looking for for very concrete situations or problems that they can afford and um, they are always um, thinking in the possibility to create um, creative solutions that maybe uh, couldn't be found without uh, the intervention of an artist's uh, way of thinking, as we told yesterday. So um, let's say that, uh, as, as, uh, this is a quote from their website, they say that there are problems everywhere that cannot be solved using conventional approaches and are those suitable subjects for artistic projects. I think that it's completely uh, their motto that we can think about all the time and all in relation with Art Util 2 and the criteria that we were thinking yesterday. So um, they said that uh, interventionist art can only be effective when the problem to be solved is clearly a state. I think that that is the first step that they used to do that is uh, find the problem, the situation that they can afford. And um, uh, they do it as uh, the name uh, express, because one closure, and sorry for the pronunciation, because probably I'm not pronouncing it well, um, it means uh, weeks of enclosure, and that's what they used to do. So uh, basically, they always uh, work as a main uh, uh, core group of five artists, but they always invite um, artists uh, from the local context, and um, they used to enclosure, be enclosure in the, um, during a short uh, period of time. It's uh, their projects are always um, developed in a in a period from two or two weeks until, I think that the most long has been like 12 weeks, but not more. So the idea is that uh, they really um, use uh, this kind of energy that you find when, the, when a lot of ma minds are thinking together. Uh, we have a party outside. <laughs> and. Um, as I was telling, that uh, they really use that, that, that energy to find um, uh, solutions in a, short, uh, in a short period of time. And uh, all their solutions that they, that they are thinking has to be realized quickly because they really um, trying always to start the projects uh, during the, pro the moment that they are uh, present in the place. Usually they leave after, but uh, when they leave, um, uh, almost all the projects have been taken already for people from the context. So the project uh, keeps alive. Uh, that, that, that is uh, that's something that we think that is really important that the uh, Wuhan Closure have developed um, projects since 1993 and the 80% of their projects are still uh, working. 
So they are really, really good in finding this kind of sustainability and to, to follow these strategies to, to get the sustainability of, of their projects. So, uh, in fact, um, how it starts? Uh, it starts in 1992 when uh, the Vienna Secession invites um, Wolf, Wolf, Wolfhound Single, and that is the name that I'm always, always pronounced badly, sorry, uh, <laughs> was invited to develop a project um, to find a solution. Uh, because uh, he used to review a lot of exhibitions there and um, the institution itself asked him, okay, why not um, instead of make these critics, you find a solution for something uh, happening in the city. So he invited a group of, of artists to uh, develop a solution for um, improving the, the conditions of living the living conditions of the homeless people. And uh, in fact, what happened uh, was that um, there were a lot of homeless people that they didn't uh, receive uh, any uh, medical attention because they didn't want to go to the hospitals and uh, they were completely in that way uh, without any, any help. And uh, what they decided to do was uh, actually um, uh, transform a uh, bank in a mobile uh, clinic to help these homeless people and um, they did it and they succeed and um, how they did it actually okay um, at that moment uh, what they decide is that in fact um, they wanted to to make the 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 bank and transform it in a in a clinic, so to purchase the bank, um, and I think that that's interesting to, to know how they manage no, to develop the project itself. To purchase the bank, uh, they uh, invite a lot of, of small sponsors, a lot of uh, small companies from the city uh, to participate in the project. And according to the size of the donation, uh, it, it will be uh, a logo of the company, it will be uh, placed in the BAM, so as much money as you can pay, as much bigger could be your logo. <laughs> so they did it and um, uh, apart to, to pay the, um, the salaries of the physicians that will be working in the BAM, what they did was, uh, and that was, uh, let's say, as I call, their first strategies, um, part of their strategies at the very beginning was always to use the media and the social uh, power of the media and the pressure of the media in the political uh, system. So what they did actually was that they, they invite a correspondent from the newspaper, the news magazine, sorry, the, the Spiegel, and uh, they uh, invite him to make an interview with the consular of Vienna. And uh, this uh, correspondent um, pretend that he was interested in, in reporting about this project. Uh, as as uh, this project uh, wouldn't be initiated by the council. So uh, the point was that at that moment, ev evidently, um, the council in the interview, he, f he felt probably that they, he had no choice because he couldn't say no, otherwise it could mean that uh, he was, you know, um, putting back a social project in the city. So he said yes, and actually uh, that uh, was a good uh, strategy because uh, he uh, publicly um, compromised himself to funding the project uh, at least for the first year. Uh, let's say that uh, it was so well that uh, it was working, the bank was working until 2007, I, th I think, that were, at the end was finished because of the cuts the project, but um, in 1998, a large vehicle was, uh, was bought, so was replaced, the old one, and the old one was sent to 
to other country, I don't remember if it was Romanian, and uh, to be used, use it in the same way. And uh, the organization, the relief organization Caritas, took care about the project. So the project uh, uh, kept alive for a long time after the, the initiators left the, the context no? where it was initiated. So I think that this is an amazing project uh, to start to think about how Closure uh, used to, to manage to find always the solutions to get the goals. No? And um, it was the first project that they did. <laughs> So, <laughs> could you imagine? <laughs> uh, well, um, yesterday we talked about the, the second project that was Use It Yourself. But first let me see, because I don't know, I have to check. I have some videos about the uh, one closure here and I would like to, to see uh, some of them. And um, let me see if we have uh, the one of... to the presentation. <laughs> okay. Um, yesterday I was telling not I didn't find the one that I was looking for, but let's follow with the with the presentation because um, I think that I don't know if yesterday everybody saw the <sighs> or or um, streaming. But uh, in any case, I just want to mention mm, some of the priests that we were talking yesterday ab about. That the one one was this uh, senior center in Civitella de Agliano uh, in 1994. That is uh, the next year after the the project that we we saw before. And um, what they did basically is that that, that they built. Uh, a social center for the elderly people in, in this uh, little village and uh, that was a social center that was already promised by the council but uh, they never uh, finished the building so uh, one closure uh, decided to make a public uh, um, call, open call via the, again the newspaper and uh, invite everyone to participate in their project and to finish the, the social center and put it in movement. And um, what happened was that, uh, in fact, the population reacted very well. And they, uh, to fund raus, ra raising, they paint walk and closure, made this uh, beautiful uh, landscape view from the city in a, in a mural. And they proposed uh, the people to take pictures just in front of this view to, to transform it in cards and uh, uh, felicitations and everybody use it and pay a small quantity to take the picture and transform it in post, postcards and then the, the, the money uh, became in the, 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 let's say the starting point of the project and uh, the council again felt that they really had to participate in this movement so they uh, take uh, care about the, um, the, fin yeah, the cost of finishing the institution and at the end the elderly people decide to take um, uh, the management directly, the management of the, of the center so um, they are still uh, running the place. And uh, then we have um, a very tricky project that happened in 1995 that uh, in relation with the strategies that we were talking yesterday, uh, it will be uh, inscribed in the illegal uh, strategy because what happens is that uh, in that year um, the legislation about immigration was that uh, all the immigrants that wanted to to pursue a uh, legally occupation in, in Austria, they have to uh, receive a work permit before. And that year, the Minister of Social Affairs um, de decided that it was uh, too much and the, he, he wanted to reduce even the quota for number of, of work permits. So, um, 
was a closure at the side at that moment that um, uh, using the special uh, agr agreement or that the artist uh, res received um, in that law that was um, in fact that if you you were uh, you were an art artist you could um, you could stay in the country as long as you prove that you was working in a project in an artistic activity so uh, they um, decided to use that uh, special uh, treatment that they already got, you know, and was like, why not to use it with the immigrants? So uh, they um, collaborate with seven immigrants to uh, commission them to make a social sculpture. So uh, to do that, uh, they need to, to build a network of patrons that would like to commission, to pay these, these immigrants as artists to do their work. And in fact, um, uh, what they, they did is like, um, they proposed to these companies, to these uh, commissioners, um, that the artists could do a kind of, of uh, good actions, let's say, good uh, deal, uh, activities. So it could, it could be a good, uh, really, really, really good promotion for the companies, give them a lot of good uh, visibility and uh, improving their image, their public image. So in fact, um, for example, um, a, a Kurd, Hosbar uh, Mohidan, and it's, sorry for the name again, uh, was commissioned to produce um, a social uh, a sculpture for the advertising agency Crows and Weir. And uh, what, the, what he did was that the for a year he was collecting baby uh, food to send it to the to, to different Kurdish cities. So, and that's the um, one uh, you see in the pictures, what you are you seeing is at the end they, they made an exhibition with all the projects that they developed together. So, in the uh, in the left side, you can see um, the the names of the of the immigrants and the the organizations that were participating, and the other one, for example, other example that I think that's interesting is um, the other artist was collecting children's clothing and school materials for Bosnia. No, at that moment in 1995, and um, other one that is so that the other picture that we can see in the presentation is that um, uh, he offered to repair all bicycles for the students' association in the University of Graz. So all the participants, the immigrants, got the the permit to stay in the country at least for that year, and um, as far as they tell in their website. Uh, one, one of them at the end was married in the country of his state. Okay. Other example that we think that is um, interesting in, in relation with other, other strategy that we, we were talking yesterday is um, the improving of the conditions of the, in the deportation um, detention center in Salzburg. Uh, uh, it happened in 1996. And we think that uh, yeah, in, in it could it could be a completely framed in the in the strategy of a space hijack, because what they did basically is that at um, uh, that moment um, the, the institution, the deportation detention detention center, was really um, in a really bad situation because the conditions of the of the inmates were really uh, bad and um, let's say that even the workers that were there were not so um, uh, proud of their work so they really were not um, not uh, feeling that they, they, they work was important at all so they really were, were without motivation and uh, let's say that was like a kind of problem that nobody wants to talk about it and uh, it was pretty difficult to find a um, connection or, or to create a connection between the persons that were implicated in the problem. So even the police that were, you know, the, 
the guards of the of the center and everything. So what they did, um, what the Wuhan closure did was that they, without ask permit, they the I think <laughs> that's something that you have to ask them at the last day. Uh, they uh, built uh, this uh, hut, uh, this uh, small shelter, a good shelter. It's beautiful, but it was really small. And um, in the in one of the main squares of the city, so they really uh, got the attention of everyone, and then they start to invite uh, the the implicated uh, parts, let's say the persons that were in relation with the problem, to have uh, conversations inside the this shelter. And as you can see in the picture, it was super small. So there was the table and them. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say that they had no other option than talk, and uh, that was what happened. They talk, and at the end, um, they uh, in fact uh, got an agreement, and they uh, start uh, uh, a center, an agency, a coordination agency, to control and to improve the conditions of the center. So that's something that uh, started as an, a leader organization inside the other organization, but uh, this one was um, in connection with all the parts related, and they, um, in fact, improved uh, a lot of, of circumstances and the conditions of the center uh, improve uh, after they leave, and uh, this is still working too. Okay. This one we, we, we saw yesterday, and um, again, I just uh, want to mention it um, pretty fast, but um, the idea is that uh, they use the, the Venice Vienna, Biennial, that's what we introduced it in the, in, the, in the strategy of institutional repurpose, because they use uh, the, the Venice Biennial to uh, get funds, uh, through the through the Austrian pavilion where they were invited to participate uh, to get funds to pay uh, schools language schools languages schools in in Macedonia to teach the kids and the, in the youth um, refugees that were hosted by by um, families in Macedonia but they couldn't uh, during the work they couldn't uh, have access any access of the education system so uh, to do that they made an amazing using the the super visible platform of the biennial they really made a good network of, of companies that were willing to, to promote the project and participate, offering materials, offering uh, funds, and apart uh, institutions like the University of Vienna and different uh, uh, Italian uh, companies too, so from bo both countries, and apart, um, as I told, told you, they invite the visitors of the, of the pavilion to participate. So they, they made a kind of lottery and you could, you could pay uh, for 20 euros, you could get this uh, bag that was full of, of surprise, of materials provided uh, by these companies. And uh, all the money was uh, given to, to these schools that were functioning uh, for a couple of years. next project for the next project we have a video that's sure Mm -hmm. Yes, it's working. This slow, my computer, yeah, has a certain age. <laughs> you have to understand. <laughs> but yeah, it seems that it's working.
Okay. Come on. <laughs> I don't have any passions. That's the point. Are we there or not? Yes. Okay, as if it's not sound, maybe I can tell, just to, to explain you a little bit. Uh, the Wuhan Cluster was invited by the Smart Museum to do a project there, and what they uh, decide to do is to connect the cultural institutions that they have a lot of, 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 of materials that they just threw out after exhibitions, after a, any event, and to propose to use these materials to build furniture for social institutions that needs this furniture. So what they did was they invited the students of Design Academy and uh, Architecture to design this, uh, this furniture. And uh, they did with them a workshop about recycling. And then uh, they start to, you know, this is, uh, she's going to be here next. <laughs> it's Claudia. <laughs> so, okay, that's the workshop of upcycling, upcycling materials with the students. I think that the, what is really interesting of uh, this uh, project, we, we put it in the, in the strategy of reforming capital because they are really changing no? the system. But I think that it's really interesting to see how uh, they really now start to work with the networks. So at the end they finish this amazing furniture for the garden, the terrace. Looks nice, eh? yeah. isn't it? Yes, look. This is already, I think, that 2005, and now I, com I confirm you. Ah, <laughs> uh, here they are. No, it's it's this video hasn't any sound. So in fact, I completely agree that it's really interesting, and actually, I and the place that I select today, and you, we have been seen, and uh, the rest that we are going to see are. Um, in 2005 and are in just a, pro in a chronological progression so you can see how they have been changing the um, 
okay let me close this and let's go back to here so you can see um, how um, their strategies has been changing and how they have been readapting you know the their own system to to the conditions and the methodology and the context of every every city or every place and or institution that invites them so um, the point is that um, until this moment i don't know if you you realize it but uh, the first projects were uh, all the time um, using the pressure of the media they use it a lot to to find this kind of sustainability let's say uh, to push sometimes the government the local government to participate or even to invite the population the citizens to add to the project and to participate to contribute and um, I really like um, that now they are, uh, since they are really concentrated in the network idea, no? To try to, to build networks in, within the city. That's something that they have been doing, doing from the very beginning because they all the time uh, have these connections with the local. Mm -hmm. And, um, and they, they always have these interviews with the local um, representatives. But, um, but in fact, mm, I think that before there were more um, asking for public funds, because I think that before you could ask more for, pu for public funds, but now actually with the situation, it's, uh, you still can do it, of course, but it's uh, quite tricky to get uh, so easily. So actually, uh, they're more uh, using the networking and trying to, you know, to really reform the capital, you know, the systems of the economy, to find the more the, the participation of the companies and uh, replace the materials, you know, the, the monetary needs with the materials or the objects that they really need to develop the project and the people, you know, the, the willingness of the people to participate and to contribute. contribute. And maybe this depends also on the, on the different in which they have been working because uh, I can imagine that uh, in the 90s there was not like uh, this I don't know if it's the right word this saturation of uh, media information through internet uh, so it made sense to use the media it uh, it could give some sort of visibility now that uh, there is this uh, like overproduction of uh, of information maybe um, the strategies the strategy has changed also because you have the feeling that you need to create uh, a more a, a deeper network or uh, like to connect people rather than uh, uh, information i don't know if no what completely do you completely it? and that's something that i would like that uh, if you can remember, ask her, <laughs> because I would like to, <laughs> to hear what they say about it. Exactly, exactly. Please note it. Uh, no, but in fact, yeah, I completely agree. That's what I think, that at that moment was really um, a good strategy, because the impact that it generates, no? And uh, they use the media, and uh, in fact, uh, not just the use of the media, but uh, but to the pressure to the to the political system in itself, no? Because really was wow, nobody, yeah, used to do that before at that moment. So it was really effective, I think. But uh, in fact, now it's something that is completely all and uh, use it and uh, because uh, in fact we have a lot of media information right now, so it's not. Uh, so uh, visible at all and at the other side if you think about yeah i mean uh, we have um, this kind of pressure everywhere it's not working more yet something that is not more working so i really think that they are super uh, smart and super fun you know it <laughs> but <laughs> but no uh, seriously i think that uh, they are really smart and uh, you have to think about that all the time in every point they are they are inviting uh, locals to participate so they're really um, let's say taking the best uh, and uh, they are really uh, changing even in the group they are participating with different artists so it's not, not always are the same artists participating in the project so that gives them i think that a lot of fresh air 
in every project because really new ideas are coming. So you can see that it's not something that it's has has become like a you know repetitive action. No, in fact, it's really all the time adapted to the context. So I think that that's too important until this moment that we have seen two very important um, things about their methodolo methodology. That's something that we could ap apply it in, an, in a wider scale, if you think about it, that is like the importance of the, connect, the context and the connection with the context, no? the, the understanding of the context and the uh, problems, and to have this kind of, of reflections and, and uh, interviews with the people that is completely implicated in the problem. And uh, the, the importance of, of the network, no? That's something that at the beginning, I think that is something that has been there for, from the very beginning, but they use it at the beginning to, to connect with the, with the context and to try to, to find the sustain, sustainability after they left, because they always, what they, what they do always is to engage the people with the problem, no? And engage the people m more with the solution, even. So the collaborative groups that they are building are the, the actually, the people that, they, that they still is in charge after they, they left. So it's, uh, I think that it's a really a good uh, method, methodology. And in fact, you can see that this is still working, no? Um, let me tell you how, uh, in fact, uh, this, this uh, methodology of the networking, it's becoming more and more important, no? In this case, uh, it's, this is a, a, a the project that they did in Porto, and to, <laughs> to go against <laughs> Sergio Dalma, I think that is who is thinking <laughs> let's put the video because we have a video about this uh, project in Porto and that's uh, a project that was uh, realized in 2010 so it's uh, not so old Porto Yes, no? <laughs> Come on. <laughs> now, yeah, let's do it. The city of Porto is famous for its marvelous old center, which has been declared as UNESCO World Heritage. Nevertheless, it is impossible to overlook that a lot of beautiful buildings are not in use anymore and in a poor condition. This made the artist collective Wochenklauser curious. Invited by Kulturgest, they decided to attend to the subject. They also have research that students are in need of affordable housing opportunities. Porto gives home to the country's biggest university and to 27,000 students who represent over 10% of all residents. On the one hand, lots of houses are out of use, and on the other hand, there are many students searching for a cheap accommodation. Wochenklauser developed the idea that interested students could obtain the right to live in one of these houses for a couple of years without paying rent, in exchange for the renovation work. The students will profit from housing free of charge, and the owner from the refurbishment. To realize this, it was necessary firstly to convince the city of the idea 
as it is landlord of many of the empty buildings. It worked. The Department of Heritage and Supply supported the project by offering this house in Rua Antonio Candido with its big garden. <laughs> to keep the expenses of refurbishment for the students as low as possible, the artists' group had to organize part of the needed material through product sponsoring. In 2010, a group of students from the Faculty of Fine Arts started to renovate the house, turning it into their apartments, studios and maybe an exhibition space. They will live and work together for the upcoming seven years without paying any rent. But the project has not only been done for the students. It has become a model how to use the old beautiful buildings and keep them in a good condition. Okay. <laughs> that was again. No, it's okay. We are laughing because we have a really music lover nearby and uh, singing, I think. But <laughs> but we really appreciate his uh, <laughs> soundtrack. Um, so well, <laughs> thinking back in one closure. <laughs> this uh, project, uh, for example. Um, uh, it's a, 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 I think that it's a good combination of, of, of some strategies because it's a, it's a reforming capital uh, strategy, no? Because they are really uh, thinking in exchange uh, between the council and the uh, owners of the buildings and the students, and uh, on the other side, um, it's uh, again a kind of. of uh, network that they uh, develop with the students and um, uh, actually what they told at the end that is becoming a model for the city it's even like uh, the dream of the Arte Util, no? when the exertions becomes the rule and um, a project uh, can be completely taken by the society and uh, yeah, now the city uh, has uh, decided that it's a very good option to keep the buildings alive and in a good shape. Uh, at the same time, that is giving uh, the solution of, of all these students that they cannot get uh, uh, housing in, in conditions. So I think that it's a pretty, pretty good example. And uh, we are talking about 2010. And uh, I think that they have been working uh, more in this idea of the networking in many different way, ways. And um, one example that I think that is pretty uh, expressive about that is uh, this one that, that happens in 2012. So uh, that happens in, in Holon, in the Israel, last year. In the Yesi Cohen, the neighborhood, uh, they were, uh, they were um, invited uh, for uh, the um, Israeli Center for Digital Art to do a project there and um, apparently um, even if the, this uh, city is becoming a cultural city, well-known city because there are cultural institutions and the good uh, cultural policies, um, the point is that the, they still had this a uh, very uh, important problem um, related with the housing conditions because um, uh, apparently uh, what happened is that um, 
the housing um, companies um, were privatized uh, in the last years, so uh, they uh, left the, the maintenance of the buildings, so they stopped with the man maintenance of the buildings and uh, uh, at that moment there was nobody that uh, could take uh, care about that maintenance so a lot of buildings were completely um, yeah, uh, in bad conditions and um, let's say that even the, the citizens were, were organizing protest movements for this problem and the moment that we, when the clock and closure uh, came to the city, so again they they start to think about it, and um, they came up with the idea that uh, again using the networking and uh, this kind of uh, reforming capital uh, strategy, uh, maybe uh, it was not necessary to to have an institution itself that uh, could take care about the buildings. Maybe it could be even the people who could do the work, but the uh, to do that, they, they should think in a well-organized network of people and professionals that could be, you know, in charge. So, uh, what they uh, did again was to find um, partners in the city, companies that were willing to offer materials to use in the, in the rehabilitation of the buildings and uh, uh, professionals. Uh, that could be uh, keen to participate in and offer their expertise to repair the buildings. So uh, they were um, talking, they, they start conversations with the local business and uh, professionals and they were to community centers, they, they, they went to schools and they uh, were trying to, to engage as much people as possible, as volunteers, and uh, at the end they build this uh, network of people that was willing to participate and they start with the works of the improvement of the houses. So, and they did the thinking in a sustainability of the project after they left because the idea was that this, this network is, is, uh, uh, will be uh, working uh, for a long time until the, all the buildings were rehabilita rehabilitated. Yeah. So I think that this um, again other good example about how they are improving this this uh, kind of idea of the networking that I think that is so important uh, for the Artigudil and for the social practice itself. No. And this one for me is like uh, the example, the, the maximum example of the networking. <laughs> like, yeah, it's like going to the, the I mean, the maximum possible. Because it's um, about uh, Kivalina. And we have again a video, so I think that it's better to see the video first. The link working, so let me open the minute of publicity. Okay. In August 2012, Hannah, Claudia, Alon, and Nissan from the Austrian artist collective Wochenklausur were invited by the Alaska Design Forum and you, the people of Kivalina, to spend two weeks in your hometown. During our stay, we got the chance to learn about Kivalina's past, its culture and tradition. We talked to many, with school kids and now, old folks, with officials and people on the streets. That's when we heard about the current situation that Kivalina is facing, the struggles and challenges in everyday life. Living space on the island is limited and narrow. Nevertheless, the shared space, such as the community center, is neglected because of its bad condition. Only the local traditional dancers use the room regularly for their rehearsals. 
But people move more and more toward the lagoon because the erosion has been gradual, probably about two, three feet a year. Toilets are not available. There is no running water, no disposal. I would say we work fast on it um, for our water supply and our disposal. Don't like the disposal. Uh, we've been living for years, but we're used to it. Yeah. Situated in the north of the village, there is a growing non-managed landfill. Providing a family with food from the local store is expensive. Access to green vegetables is limited. Kivalina is in need of relocation. However, this seems quite unlikely at the moment. The circumstances are not only complex, but responsibilities are unclear. Still going on as of today since 1969. <laughs> I remember about them talking about relocating. They were still, still on the top. <laughs> Back in Vienna, we managed to find partners for Kivelina. We call them Agents of Change. Kivalina. My name is Catherine Ball. I am an artist and activist that's from the United States. But right now I'm hiking in the mountains of Greece. I've been here learning about how the austerity measures in Greece have been creating ecological exploitation. So Greece has a huge debt right now and what they've been doing is selling off some mountains like this mountain that I'm on and turning it into gold mines. They've been using the money from the sale of the mountain, which they sell to a private company, to pay back their debt. And I'm interested in the environment and environmental issues, and I try to do what I can to help. So I'm really excited to, to participate in this project in Kivalina. And what I would like to do is help the youth at the Boys and Girls Club in Kivalina build a community garden and I would like the garden ideally to have a lot of food plants because I've heard that there aren't many fresh vegetables available in the grocery store and so the community garden could grow things like kale, lettuce, really hardy greens and maybe arctic kiwi and other cold hardy fruits and what I think would make sense would be to build cold frames which would be like miniature greenhouses I'd actually like this to be an, not just a project where I'm helping uh, youth at Youth in Kivalina build this garden, but also to Oops. have it be an exchange with youth from a small town in Florida called New Smyrna Beach, Florida, that I'm going to be living at from February 15th to June 15th of this upcoming year. And what I'd like to do is pair the youth at the Boys and Girls Club in Florida with youth at the Boys and Girls Club in Kivalina so that they can inspire each other and share ideas for gardening. The youth at the Boys and Girls Club in Florida have had a garden for at least a year and so I'm sure that they have some ideas and can provide some expertise. And likewise, I think that the youth in Kivalina could really get the, get the youth at the Boys and Girls Club in Florida more excited about their garden and maybe develop it further. So, I'm really looking forward to um, meeting you and learning more about what life's like in Kivalina and helping out as much as I can. Thanks. Bye. Oh, here's the view. Hi everybody, we are part of Architecture Without Borders Austria. We currently work on projects in Bhutan in Asia and South Sudan in Africa. 
The Wochenklausur invited us to develop some new ideas for your community center. Develop them together with you. We would like to introduce ourselves. This is me. I'm Philip. I like soccer, reading, and cooking. Hi, I'm Pia. I'm an architect specialized in color concepts. I want to bring fresh and new colors to Kivalina Community Center. Hello, my name is Bettina Hato. A communication center is for me a place to sing, dance, cook, and of course to, um, to talk to each other. Hello, I'm Anna. Um, I'm an architecture student from Zagreb. I, I like dancing, I like spending time with my friends, and I like snow. Hi! We are Daniel and, and Daniel. Daniel. Those are Daniels and they're just developing a new dancing choreography for the Kivalina Community Center. Hello, my name is Magdalena. I come from the Italian Arts and I love cooking. Hello, I'm Christine and I'm curious about the outcome of the new Community Center. Hello, I'm Martina. And I really like Inuit culture, so I'm really looking forward to go to you to Alaska. And yes, I hope we can do something really special together. We would love to come to Kivalina and to work with you on your community center. Kivalina, my name is Sperl. I'm an architect based in Vienna in Austria. I finally applied for an affairs lab one year ago. The applied for an affairs lab is a laboratory at the uh, Institute of Architecture of the University of Applied Arts Vienna, focusing on cultural, infrastructural, environmental phenomena in sub saharan Africa. Um, last year I worked with a beautiful team of six students in the village of Gobuliga, Northern Ghana. Also uh, Teresa participated, whom you uh, will meet very soon. 
Um, we worked with the community of Global Liga on their water situation and we are really excited to start a conversation with you on your water, waste and sanitary situation. Hello, my name is Teresa. I support an Austrian NGO in Ghana which wants to improve the water situation in the village of Global Liga. Therefore, I had a lot of talks and discussions with people from the village who are in charge of the water supply and I made an information program with kids about good water and sanitation habits. Here in the back you can see the Danube. This river goes through Vienna, the city where Mary Sebastian, Anna and I live. Hi, I'm Anna. Therese and I know each other because we are doing our master program together here in Vienna. We are studying water management and environmental engineering at the University of Natural Resources and Life Sciences. Our study basically deals with drinking water supply and wastewater disposal. Moreover, we engage in solid waste management and hydraulic engineering. Essential in our study program is also the assessment of human impacts on the environment. Hello everybody, I am Sebastian. I just returned from a project from Burkina Faso in Africa, where we have a cooperation with the University of Ouagadougou. We want to make a tool to assess the health of the water bodies there and the tool should be based on fish. So here you can see some of the fish we kept for determination. I have a bachelor's degree in uh, environmental engineering and I study applied limnology and ecosystem management. Now enough about us. We are ready for and enthusiastic about starting a conversation with you, Kivalina, on your infrastructural and environmental topics. Yeah, and about the topic waste, we would like to work with you about recycling possibilities and about the organization of the landfill. Um, moreover, we also want to discuss with you your sanitation system. And we are highly interested in water topics, so everything regarding water health, water supply and ecosystem health. Uh, and we would be very happy to get in touch with uh, personal contacts in Kivalina and start a little cooperation with you. So, greetings from Vienna. Bye! Bye, -bye. <laughs> Hi, Kivalina. I'm Alon. I visited you last summer in, in your village. And these are my colleagues. I'm Andrea. I'm from Italy and I'm an architect. I'm Blake. I'm also an architect and I'm from Iowa. I'm Hannah, I'm from Rhode Island, and I'm an artist. Hi, I'm Daniel, an architect from Spain. Hi, I'm Helena, I'm from London, and we are all from the Centre for Research Architecture, Goldsmiths University of London. We are starting a new project to work together to model and visualize your village, the environment, the law, and the challenges that each poses towards the future of Kivalina. Uh, we really look forward to start working on this project and uh, to talk to you and meet with you and hear all about uh, life and challenges you're facing in, the in your village and uh, we hope to get in touch with you very soon and also, you, also to visit you and in the meanwhile we say hello from London and uh, wish you a great day. Bye! Bye! Bye. Bye. <laughs> now we need your help. Please let us know four interested delegates, one for each agent of change. Team up with the Agent of Change. Keep up communication via Facebook. To answer questions the Agent of Change might have about everyday life, ask questions yourself and discuss your ideas. Connect the Agent of Change to relevant persons. For example, talk to the headmaster of the school. Together, we make change. So, <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> In fact, it's really like uh, uh, the last um, stage of this uh, idea of the network. So, um, for me, that was uh, it's a really, really, really interesting. Uh, Project because uh, I see that they have been working with the, this 
connections with the locals for a long time and now they are really starting to make networks even abroad so it's like you don't have to keep you know uh, thinking in the in the local you have to start for the local of course and you need always a local but you can uh, even think in the in in the minds that are abroad to collaborate with you so now uh, let's say that the capital is uh, the imagination and the creativeness all over the world and the people that you can um, invite to participate and that uh, I mean even the the idea of to use the media the social media as the tool to keep these connections going and to keep this uh, network growing and uh, working together I think that is really uh, and smart and uh, really interesting uh, to use the tools that we have at that moment so as we were talking from the very beginning how they are always using their context and the the moment that they are living so the really the strategies and the tools that they can't afford in in any case and now with all the media and all the the capacity to to connect people all over the world it's almost like a without any limit. You can't invite uh, whatever. They are living in Alaska and they are getting help from all over the world. So I think it's really, really interesting. The case study, please talk with them about it. <laughs> Ask them some questions about it. And now, um, just to, to finish a little bit, and I would like to to in a while to start to think about arte util in general and maybe we can um, ask uh, some questions or think in possible questions that we have uh, about the whole idea of arte util as a sustainable uh, practice and um, in relation with the social context and with the with the social uh, 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 yeah, with the social context and with the with the um, with the social practice itself, uh, I want to tell you uh, my own experience that I think that is uh, quite interesting too, because I had the opportunity uh, last summer to participate in a workshop with uh, one of the members of Work Closure, with uh, Carl Seringer, and um, uh, I was invited by by Radical Intention, the group of Radical Intention from Italy, to to do this workshop um, with uh, Carl and. Um, Basically, um, the most interesting uh, part of the of the the um, to know about uh, to know Carl, of course, that is a great uh, person, uh, was to see how really they work. So it's uh, that uh, let's see that I could uh, uh, live by myself uh, this methodology that has they have been implemented for such a long time and I knew before because I, I, I knew about their projects and uh, they know that they are one of our examples of the archive. So um, I really enjoy this experience and so what happened actually was that um, from the very beginning Radical Intention invited us to trying to to analyze the activities of the Centro Nacional de Acolienza in Villaggio Labrocchi and uh, this is a center that is um, basically uh, focus in the in the support and uh, help to the uh, people that is asking for the condition of refugee but uh, they are still in the process to, to get the conditions or being rejected and is uh, basically for uh, families so it's a uh, uh, lot of cases when when they, uh, they came um, uh, people with with kids and sometimes it's a whole family but sometimes it's just uh, one parent or the, the father or the mother with the kids uh, they are sent it directly to this center and uh, what they uh, does there is uh, basically uh, give them shelter and they give them um, all the facilities that they can need and they start to teach them uh, the Italian language and they start to, to give them some notions about the culture in Italy and about uh, laws and the uh, regulations so let's say that is a kind of, of, of a starting point to start a new life 
if that is possible, and um, they uh, give them support and advice to uh, for the process of getting the the the, re the refugee conditions. So it's uh, sometimes um, yeah uh, yeah most of the time they 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 come with a really um, bad histories and they have been really uh, damaged for their own uh, lives and their, their own experiences. So sometimes they cannot express very well uh, their history and, um, and they need it to, to get this uh, condition of, of refugee. Uh, they really need to, to tell uh, what is their, you know, their, the problem or the situation in, in their uh, country of origin. So um, they, in the center, they even have, you know, um, people that is really um, engaged to, to work with them with a lot of passions to try to, to, to develop these uh, stories and to, to follow the process, the legal process to, to ask for the, for the condition of refugee. So um, we visit the center and um, we were uh, very well attended for, for the uh, workers and the volunteers that are working there. And uh, we can see here Luigi, that is the director of the center, that he was explaining us about the procedence of the immigrants and uh, how it has been changing in the last years and it's completely related with the, the situations that we are living all over the world right now. And um, he was telling us a little bit how the center functions that I have to say that uh, it was uh, it's a really good center. I mean, they, they have a lot of, of uh, facilities. The, the space is beautiful and uh, and they always have uh, this such uh, of an amazing respect for the for the inhabitants. So it's uh, that um, uh, they are all the time organizing activities to try to engage the local uh, the locals to came to the center and uh, to make different activities, cultural activities, ma uh, mainly a lot of of screenings, uh, screenings or or sometimes they, they are, you know, making the conference or they are, they are giving their space to develop uh, cultural activities. And so all the time and the uh, inmates are, the inmates, the, <laughs> the, um, the people that is at that moment uh, uh, living and there can, can participate in the activities, but the, it's, it's never uh, an obligation. So they can do it if they feel that they want because sometimes uh, they don't ha they don't want to talk to anyone and they really need uh, privacy so uh, for that for that reason uh, in fact we didn't meet any any uh, family directly because really they respect their privacy so uh, we just uh, were talking about uh, what the activities that they had and uh, what were the main their main problems what they feel that were you know the um, situations that they couldn't manage that until the, this moment they have doing very well but they think that they could improve in in different uh, mm, uh, issues so what we did was um, from the very beginning was uh, to think about uh, if we could uh, propose some solutions or not it was all the time to um, a process that was uh, uh, not uh, mandatory at all so um, we confirmed the group of the workshop were uh, three curators and um, no more and lying we were like three five curate five curators and um, seven artists and uh, what we did is um, Basically, uh, Carl um, put us together. We were living for, for seven days together and sharing experiences. Let's say that we talk a lot in different um, contexts and in different uh, moments about the situation in the, in, in the center, in the, uh, in, in, uh, the Acolientia, in Proyecto Acolientia. And um, uh, at a certain point, uh, Carl told us that we should uh, start with the brainstorming. So it was like uh, after the weeks, the days of enclosure, let's say, we start to, to, uh, to have this uh, brainstorming. And um, 
what we did was um, to have a general brainstorming and then we, we develop a, we, we split in groups and we uh, propose different uh, projects or, or ideas that could, could be developed and uh, before we, we went to, 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 to make these projects uh, visible, uh, they, they just remember us uh, something that I think that is the, the motto of Wohen Closure that was like, uh, remember that there should be something um, real, simple, you know, like uh, keep it uh, small, simple and, and real, no? To, to can do it uh, easily. So, in fact, uh, we, uh, every group developed like two different uh, projects and, um, and Carl came with an idea to, to make a fundraising. So for us it was like uh, really uh, revealing that uh, in fact uh, he already knew that we, we will all uh, generate uh, ideas to, to give uh, yeah, possible activities, to, to, to facilitate the communication between the inside and the outside of the center and to improve you know, the conditions in, inside, the relation with the families and uh, the situation of the of the, um, the male um, population, let's say, uh, because in fact um, um, what is happening is that um, the women are coming for their own condition of mothers and everything. It's like they are more, uh, from the very beginning, more willing to, to be integrated. So um, they really, um, the, let's say that uh, she understand uh, quickly uh, that she, they have to accept, you know, the, the new culture and the new rules and, and they start uh, immediately to, to, to learn the, the language and everything and in, 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 in the case of the male population they really feel more threatened and uh, they really feel that uh, it's a different culture and uh, they're coming uh, uh, mainly from, from countries where the, the male position is really high and, uh, and the female is lower, so they really feel uh, that uh, the equilibrium is broken and uh, let's say that uh, the, it's difficult, it's more difficult for them, the integration. So we came with a lot of ideas in relation with that to give uh, some kind of activities, propose activities for the male population and to give them like a better, let's say, a, a better place in, in the center or um, um, not place but a position, give them a real position, uh, an occupation that could give them some, some uh, self-confidence. But um, in fact, we, 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 we didn't think in the fundraising. And Carl just came with this idea about the fundraising that was quite funny because it was a simple one, was not so, but uh, was great because what he did was, uh, uh, what I want to do is to give this idea to the fundraising to, to, to the Proyecto Colienza so they can't uh, really produce the projects that you are proposing. So at the end what, they di what we did was uh, we made a meeting with the Proyecto Colienza and uh, we present them our ideas and uh, we thought that they would uh, choose, you know, some of them or whatever, but they were completely uh, pleased with the ideas and they said that they really felt that um, they, they could develop all the ideas, but then like in a different stages, like uh, we, we really like all, and we think that are all doable, you know, like uh, we can do it and it's easy and it's really also, we, we really follow the instructions. And uh, <laughs> that they, they gave us. <laughs> but in fact, um, they said that um, with the idea of the fundraising, yeah, they, they, they saw really, really possible to develop our ideas. So uh, until this moment, as far as I know, uh, even the council uh, of uh, Village of Labroque uh, have been informed about these uh, projects and uh, they are really willing to participate even to uh, funding probably one of the projects. And uh, yeah, we, we, the idea is to keep in touch 
with the Proyecto de Acolienza to know if they are developing some of our ideas. No? But uh, I really uh, want to, to highlight this, this uh, condition that, in fact, um, one closure is um, one of the or main examples of Arte Util because they really are um, thinking in the sustainability from the very beginning. So I think that this is um, something that is completely related with this, uh, with this uh, laboratory. And I think that, in fact, is, um, it's great that they are coming, personally, uh, because um, uh, there has this uh, has um, reached this equilibrium between between the creativeness and uh, and the necessity of, of find the the, mm, the funds to develop the projects and uh, to find not just the the yeah the money itself but to find the people that is willing to develop it and to to build this kind of, of networks and to, to generate this kind of collaboration because even with in, in my case when we were in the workshop uh, we didn't meet each other before and we met there and uh, um, in fact we, we finished collaborating and, uh, and we, we had these um, good ideas and we were even impressed like wow I mean uh, it's, it's uh, easy if you do it well so I think that it's important, the methodology, and I think that it's really important to think about the strategies. And uh, as uh, Claudia has been uh, <laughs> telling us, uh, it's really important to think in the organization and uh, to build a good network when you are starting a project. So, and now I don't know if you have any questions uh, about r 2 itself. I would like to, to throw out or or to, to propose some, some questions that we were, well, that, uh, the were, were work in New York in the lab that was developed in the Queens Museum. Uh, they there developed four different hypotheses, uh, but I choose two um, to, to send to you the questions and see what is the answer that you are giving. And it's more about, I, the, I choose the, the, the two uh, hypotheses, hypotheses related with the idea of sustainability. And uh, one is uh, this idea of the project ecosystem, you know, that is, um, we are thinking in questions like, uh, not just for Wuhan Closure, but in a general way, from the whole idea of Arte Util and the social practices, we could think about the, what are the different exper expectations of art you know, on these kind of projects when, when it works as a proposition, a prototype or a fully implemented project, you know, or when should the project end and when and how should an artist initiate or leave and how does one choose, develop and maintain partnerships across cross sectors, uh, thinking about the multidisciplinary uh, and the um, other question that I think is interesting is uh, how do artists initiators work with or again institutions? No? Um, I think that's things that uh, the artist has to, to really uh, think before to start the project or how are projects found and sustained and to what extent is this central to the project's conception and ideology? And that's again... Uh, um, something that uh, we have been talk about and even this morning we were mentioning that uh, how do you manage as a cultural producer or as, or, or as an artist to, to find a, a, fund, a funding and a sustainability that, that, that keeps the ideology of the project alive not, not put you in the, in the opposite side and uh, how is the scale determined and evaluate? So that's some questions that I would like to, to propose. And I think that we can do a break. <laughs>